Hello, I'm Neil Nunes with the BBC News. Russian military commanders have been strongly criticized over the deaths of dozens of soldiers in a Ukrainian attack in the occupied Donbass region using long-range U.S.-made HIMARS rockets. In Moscow, the Ministry of Defense said 63 servicemen were killed, but Russian military bloggers said the number was much higher. Hugo Beshega in Kiev says by using these weapons, Ukraine is sending Russia a message. I think what the Ukrainians have been doing with those long-range weapons, they've been uh, targeting key Russian positions in places away from the front lines. Go back to the operation to retake Kherson. They targeted key positions being used by the Russians with these kinds of weapons. In the last few weeks, they've been doing the same in different locations. So perhaps that's exactly what we're seeing here, a key facility housing perhaps hundreds of Russian soldiers being the main target for Ukraine in the Donetsk region. President Volodymyr Zelensky says Russia is planning a protracted campaign of attacks with Iranian-made explosive drones aimed at exhausting Ukraine. In his nightly address, he said more than 80 attack drones had been shot down this year. We have information that Russia is planning a protracted attack using Shahed drones. It's probably banking on exhaustion. Exhausting our people, our anti-aircraft defenses, our energy. But we act and do everything so that the terrorists fail in their aim, as all their others have failed. Russia's been using the drones to target Ukraine's energy infrastructure. The Irish Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, has said mistakes were made on all sides in the way Britain's exit from the European Union was handled. Mr Varadkar, who returned to power last month, said trading arrangements for Northern Ireland were too strict. Here's Emma Vardy. Post-Brexit trading arrangements have been at the heart of a political crisis, which has seen Northern Ireland without a fully functioning government since February. The Democratic Unionist Party have said they won't go back into power sharing while they believe the arrangements undermine Northern Ireland's place within the UK. Mr Varadkar has been unpopular with some unionists who see him as instrumental in the creation of the protocol. The UK and the EU are currently involved in negotiations to reduce the problems that some businesses are experiencing. Thousands of Brazilians have been filing past the coffin of the football legend Pele on display in the Santos Stadium where he scored many of his goals. The FIFA president, Gianni Infantino, joined mourners paying their respects. He said FIFA would urge all its members to name a stadium in Pele's honour. From London... You're listening to the latest world news from the BBC. The French Film Academy says anyone being investigated for allegations of sexual misconduct will be barred from its annual award ceremony next month. The César Academy says it's acting out of respect for actual or presumed victims. It's deciding whether to apply the ban to all future nominations and award ceremonies. The Supreme Court of Mexico has elected the first female chief justice in its history. Justice Norma Pina was elected in a 6-5 vote by fellow justices. In her first remarks, she said judicial independence was indispensable and she would work towards building majorities, leaving her personal vision aside. The 63-year-old chief justice has defended the right to abortion and pledged to fight gender-based violence. Electric vehicles accounted for almost four out of every five new car registrations in Norway last year. The major oil and gas producer comfortably beat its own record of 65% for the previous year. In the European Union, electric vehicles made up less than 9% of new registrations. Thor Egil Brodland speaks for the Norwegian Automobile Federation. The Norwegian EV policy has been a great success, and uh, that is due to the very generous taxation system for EVs. We are a bit concerned, however, because the government is now starting to increase the taxes on EV, and we are afraid that it will reduce the sale on EVs. The former drummer with the American band Earth, Wind & Fire, Fred White, has died at the age of 67. He played on hits including September and Boogie Wonderland, winning six Grammys with the band he joined in the early 1970s. Earth, Wind & Fire became one of the first black acts to sell out Madison Square Gardens in New York in 1979. They've sold more than 90 million records. BBC News.